So how many of you are familiar with the Cabazon dinosaurs, the famous roadside attraction near Palm Springs, California? I'm guessing most of you have seen it, or at least know about it. But how many of you know who built it? Who designed and created it? Thanks for joining me on my tours of cemeteries, gravesites, memorials, and final resting places of the famous and infamous people who are gone but not forgotten. The Cabazon Dinosaurs in Cabazon, California, not far from where I live, is pretty much one of the most famous roadside attractions in the country, probably in the world. I'm guessing that almost everyone watching this video has either been there to visit or has seen it. It's been in movies, TV shows, magazines, newspapers, documentaries, throughout the years, throughout the decades. Who doesn't love a dinosaur? Especially a dinosaur in the shape of a building, or a building in the shape of a dinosaur. I mean, who comes up with an idea like that to build something like that along the, uh, the one of the busiest freeways in the country here in California and to not only design it but build it himself? Well, the sculptor and artist responsible for building those Cabazon dinosaurs is Claude Bell, Claude Kenneth Bell. His grave is located right here. Took me forever to find it. I mean, I walked this entire section. This is Rose Hill Cemetery in Whittier, California. This is where most of my family members are buried. My brother is buried here just across the street, not very far from, from Claude's um, final resting place. So I'm pretty familiar with the cemetery. I've been here a lot. And when I looked at the map, I thought, well, this is going to be easy to find. And I was completely wrong. I walked and I walked and I walked for an hour. I looked in the entire section where the Find a Grave Memorial said his grave was located, but it isn't actually in that section. It's the section is actually divided into two sections. The bottom section, I even looked in part of the bottom section here, which is where we are here. We're at the bottom near Workman Mill Road. This is the street. And that's Rose Hills on the other side as well. This is if you're not familiar with Rose Hills, one of the largest, if not the largest cemetery in the country. Just goes on for, seems like, miles and miles. And so we're on this side, the freeway side, so right just on the other side of those trees there, right on, right on the other side of the hill, that's the freeway. That's the 605 freeway. So I walked every single row here took me an hour or so, couldn't find it. The Find a Grave Memorial really had it listed as being in the incorrect section, and there was no G GPS. So I've added a GPS, so in case you decide to visit yourself, it'll be very simple now. You just uh, pull up here to this, uh, you come in gate 17, drive around to the Laurel Lawn section, and actually it's not in the Laurel Lawn section, which even the cemetery as it listed as the Laurel on section. So I think that's why the Find a Grave memorial was incorrect. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to show you the name of the actual section. Uh, Kumora. So now Kumora section is the bottom section here. Laurel Lawn section right here that's the top section so I was looking mostly in that section there I did look in this section a bit as well but I didn't look at every single grave and I guess I should have I just finding his information was not easy I've really had to do a lot of work a lot of sleuthing a lot of detective work to find to find this guy but it was worth it. I'm glad I did. I, I love artists and architects and sculptors and designers, and they really don't get a lot of credit uh, when it comes to final resting places. He has one of the most famous roadside attractions and sculptures in the entire world, 
and didn't even have a photo of his grave anywhere that I could find. So I've added a photo to the find a grave, added a GPS, and now I'm doing this video. So if, if there are any fans out there, you'll be able to find him. But again, going back to trying to locate him online, even just searching for him, there's not an awful lot of information. And then I thought, well, Claude Bell, I mean, there's how many Claude Bells could there be? I assume there weren't very many at all. Well, I was completely wrong. When he was born, I guess in the year he was born, there were lots of Claude, Claude Bells. I get Bell is a popular last name, and I guess Claude back in the day was a real popular name, like John maybe, and uh, or Steve. And so there were a lot of Claude Bells. So anyway, I was able to track him down. Well, let me turn the camera around and show you his grave, and then I'll tell you the rest of his story. As you can see from his headstone, Claude Bell lived a very long life. He lived to be over 90 years old. He was an artist and a sculptor and worked at Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, at least for part of his career, as a portrait artist. He started building the Cabazon dinosaurs in the mid-1960s. So based on his date of birth and date of death, my guess is he started working on the dinosaurs after he retired from Knott's Berry Farm. From what I've read, he owned the Wheel Inn restaurant, which was right on the I-10 freeway in Cabazon, and to draw attention to it and to bring in customers, he created the dinosaurs as a roadside attraction. I remember eating at the restaurant quite a number of times over the years. But sadly, it's gone today. It was torn down, I think, around 10 years ago or so. For some reason, someone decided it would be a good idea to build a fast food restaurant right in front of the dinosaurs, blocking the view from the freeway. You can still see them, partially, but much of the effect has been lost because they are now partially blocked by these buildings. Our family used to drive by the dinosaurs nearly every week, on our way to Palm Springs to visit our grandparents when I was a kid. So for more than a decade we watched as Claude Bell built from the ground up his dinosaurs. And it was something we all looked forward to seeing every week to see how much progress he had made. I don't think any of us really thought he would ever complete them. I mean it really did take over a decade to build the very first dinosaur and then he started working on uh, the T-Rex dinosaur that's behind the original dinosaur. But we were all very happy to see the finished buildings when they were completed. Today they act as a museum and gift shop. And the last time I was there, there was no admission to get into the parking lot just to walk around and view them. Visiting Claude Bell today also really reminded me of some of my other favorite roadside attractions here in Southern California. and made me wonder who had created them and where they're buried. The drive through Donut Hole in La Puente, California was really just down the street from where I grew up, but I haven't been able to find out who actually created this Southern California landmark. The Wigwam Motel in Rialto, California, which again is not very far from uh, where I grew up, has a Wikipedia page that says the creator was Frank A. Redford. But when I look him up on Find a Grave, there's no memorial page at all. This was a chain of motels scattered around the country and uh, built in the 1930s and 40s and is now on the National Registry of Historic Places. And yet the creator of another one of the most popular roadside attractions in the country doesn't even have a final resting place, at least that I can find. The famous Tale of the Pop hot dog stand, which stood on the corner of La Cienega and Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles for decades, was a building in the shape of a hot dog, and according to its Wikipedia page, was built by Milton J. Black. Now apparently, Black was a very famous Los Angeles architect and built many celebrity homes in the area, but again, I wasn't able to locate a find a grave memorial for him. I'm starting to notice a pattern here when it comes to architects and artists and sculptors and the creators of some of the most famous roadside attractions in the world, the creators have been overshadowed by their famous creations. And none of them have final resting places that can be visited by fans and admirers. The exception is Claude Bell, and he's been dead for decades, and I was only just recently able 
to find and document his final resting place. So I'm hoping that some of you watching might be interested in helping me track down the final resting places of these other three famous roadside attraction creators. For those of you who are not familiar with these four Southern California landmarks, here's some photos and video footage from some of my visits in the past to these locations. Hi everybody, I'm here today in uh, Cabazon, uh, which is about 10-15 miles uh, north of Palm Springs. It's just right off the freeway. And uh, when I was a kid, back in the 60s and 70s, we would drive by this uh, dinosaur uh, structure as it was being built. And I believe it took about a decade for this one and the, uh, the one behind it uh, off to come back here so you can see the other one to be completed and uh, here we are about um, 50 years later and uh, they're still here and so am I and I'm still driving by and uh, so I thought I would uh, stop by and uh, uh, just uh, get a selfie uh, back then in the 60s and 70s we didn't have do selfies and we didn't have cell phones and uh, and I don't uh, I don't think I even have a single picture of me uh, with the dinosaurs so I thought I would uh, stop by today if you've never been here it's uh, it's definitely worth the trip. It, like I say, it's just probably 10 minutes from uh, Palm Springs. And uh, these uh, are uh, two of my favorite uh, buildings in the shape of animals uh, uh, that I've ever uh, been to and uh, well worth the trip. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to uh, stop by and say hi. As I mentioned earlier, the famous drive through Donut Hall is located in La Puente, California at the corner of Amar Road and Hacienda Boulevard. If you exit the 10 freeway going south, you just drive about five, maybe 10 minutes south on Hacienda Boulevard until you come to Amar Road, and then you'll see the donut hole on the right-hand side. Here I am in La Puente at a um, uh, Southern California landmark. It's the uh, drive through Donut Hall and uh, it was built back in 1968. That was the first time I had a donut here and here I am nearly 50 years later back for another donut and uh, it's one of those places where uh, you know it always brings a smile to your face and uh, who doesn't love donuts or uh, buildings in the shape of donuts. Well, I finally made it to the Wigwam Motel on Route 66 in San Bernardino. I've been uh, wanting to come here for decades, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> it was definitely worth the wait. I wish I would have come a little bit earlier, and uh, I can't wait to come back and actually spend a night in one of these uh, really cool uh, motel rooms. They're in the shape of teepees, and... Uh, uh, this was like a, a huge thing back in uh, you know the 50s to have roadside attractions along Route 66 and uh, um, this is one of the best ones and they've really really uh, done a great job of, uh, of keeping them up to date uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect but they're uh, really nice so you can see there's a pool and uh, a gift shop and lots of memorabilia and uh, Kumar the uh, one of the owners and uh, managers is uh, uh, really great guy, friendly guy, uh, full of uh, terrific uh, inform and helpful information. So stop by and say hi and uh, spend the night. Oh, as always, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Love your comments. And you know that I'm glad to know I'm not the only grave hunter and cemetery enthusiast. There's thousands and thousands of you out there. So and at least a few of you are watching my channel so so thank you for that and if you haven't already subscribed you can do that down below as well just click the little bell and you'll be alerted every time i upload a new video so i'll hope to see you next time